hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Nkem and i'm so so happy to have you back here on Nkem space so on today's video we're going to be talking about pro of funds yes it's another important step on the immigration journey so if you like this content and you're really really itching to hear what i have to say please sit back relax and let's have fun has been on everybody's mind yes it's a very dicey topic that people are not willing to share but i'm not gatekeeping any information no so let's start from the basics before you even start to apply for any immigration pathway you need to start saving your money so i'll be sharing my own tips to help you make your proof of funds journey interesting time before you even start any of your relocation journey, you need to start planning on how to save money. You need to have an account statement that has been showing that you've been saving this amount or you've been having this income all through this process. There are many ways you can show your proof of funds. You can talk about your income, that's your salary or your business income. You can talk about gift deed from your parents or your immediate family, that's your siblings or your parents. You can also talk about sale of your item, like your car, your generator, your, you know, your fixed assets. You can also talk about that. So let's start from your income, that's your salary. You know, well, trying to put together your employment documents you need to put your reference letter and at least three months previous pay slips so you need to show your pay slips for you to have valid proof of funds using income you have to have steady income or salary levels that's your steady salary over time this is very important because you're going to be sending your statement of account as well. So you can have your proof of funds shown that you receive salary every month or bi-weekly or anything so long as it's salary consistently paid. It needs to be from your company. It needs to be consistent. If there are any increases, it might be followed by maybe increase in maybe end of the year profit sharing or quarterly but your salary has to be consistent. So usually I advise to put like six months to one year statement of accounts to prove your proof of funds using your income. But if you have the money generally, you need to make that money. You can be saving the money for two years, three years, but what you need to send alone is like six months or one year, six months or one year statement of account, not your 10 years or five years statement of account. Nobody really needs that amount of detail. The second way you can use your proof of fund is gift deed. So now if you're blessed with family members, that's immediate family members that can grant you this amount for your trip, then you can use that as proof of funds. But you need to follow up that payment with a document. So for instance, your mom is giving you money. She would send you the money. Maybe if she's giving you 10 million, she sends it to you as a gift deed. The narration has to be gift deed to my son or gift deed generally or daughter. Can just be, but make sure that gift deed is on the narration sent to your account. Apart from that, make sure that that money is not sent just when you want to apply. Make sure it's not sent like yesterday, then you send them the document today. It's dicey for you to do something like that. It's going to look very, you know, not so appropriate, kind of. So obviously it's your parents, so they already know you've been doing this process. But you need to follow up with the document. A document called a gift deed. It has to be a sworn document that will state that your parents or your daughter, your, your parent or your sibling is granting you this money as a gift for you to use for your immigration journey or immigration process. This way, the parent is swearing and saying, oh, I'm sending this money to my daughter and Kim for her to pursue her immigration um, dreams or aspirations. I have 
I have I've parted ways with this stuff like that. She's going to be proving that she has parted ways with that money for you to succeed in your own immigration journey. So make sure you get a gift deed, sworn gift deed by the courts. Then finally, sales of your assets. So if you have a land or a house or some or some capital projects like your generator or your maybe your sewing machines or something you you own already but you sold it out you can you know when you're selling it out you have to write a receipt to the person right and then you have a copy of that receipt and then when the person pays you the person sends you the money the narration of that payment should be payments for maybe the car payments for car pop one 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 or maybe payment for this car Mazda 5 SRS something it has to be payment for the narration of what you're selling and it has to flow with the the description of what that thing is so and then you have to follow up that proof of funds with documentation so you have to follow up with the receipt of sale or contract of sale any which any way any one you have receipt of sale or contract of sale account statements where that money reflected that you've collected that money you understand so that receipt of sale and the account statement you're also going to put in your explanation letter that your proof of funds also came from sale of um your property or your car or your whatever also in your for the gifts deed case you also have to explain that your proof of funds came from your gifts deed from your parents so you can have your proof of funds done in this way now we've known the tips and the ways we can have our proof of funds i'm going to now take you through how to present your proof of funds a few people just feel like when they put their statement of account, that's enough. But you're giving the agent more work to do, like looking through everything and making sure you're okay. Why don't you give him a plan so that he can see it outrightly and then when he's going through it, he doesn't waste time. So let's go into the illustration. Hi and welcome to the presentation side of this amazing video. So what we're going to be doing here is to be introducing the agent to your proof of funds. Give a snapshot of your proof of funds, introducing the agent to everything you're going to be providing for your proof of funds. This is very important for both permanent residency application and study visa application. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be sharing the updated proof of funds explanation snapshots that I had after I applied for my study visa. So what it means is I had applied for my permanent residency at first, and then I applied for my study visa. And so you'll be seeing information that is good for both permanent residence and student visa application. I also added some other things which would aid our conversation. So let's go into it. First, we have our dates. And after our date, we have our address and who we're addressing this letter to. And then we have the title of this letter, which is the proof of funds explanation snapshot. And I introduced this with just a line stating that I'm using this letter to provide more information about my application and the documents that I have uploaded. So let's go to the body of this letter. Slowly. Yeah. So for the body of this letter, you can see that we have a table. And I have stated that my proof of funds is made up of support from six different sources. And on this table, I have the proof of fund, the nature of the proof of fund, the company where this money is, the amount in Naira, the amount in USD, and the equivalent amount in Canadian dollars. First on my proof of fund list was my tuition deposit. As at this time, I'd already gotten in talks with my university, with my MBA program, and I had to pay some tuition deposit to secure my admission. And I paid this amount in Canadian dollars. So I wrote this here. This has to coincide with the receipt you have. On my second proof of funds, I have my savings, which is my personal savings. It was in Guaranteed Trust Bank at the time. And if you have sold any assets, to make up your savings, you should, in, you should indicate right here that you are going to be including asset sale. 
so that the agent already knows okay this is where that asset sale comes in your savings and it goes directly to where it is as at this time i didn't sell any assets so i wrote the amount in nigerian naira and the equivalent in canadian dollars the next here was my guaranteed investment funds aside from my savings i had an investment fund i think it was with the money market fund it was with Stambic IBTC Asset Management, that was Stambic IBTC Bank at the time, and I had done this in Nigeria Naira. If your investment was in US dollars, this is the right place to put it. And then I had the equivalent in Canadian dollars. As at that time, I also had my IV Scholarship Award, which is naturally a scholarship from my business school, IV Business School, and this was given to me in Canadian dollars. Next is loans. So these loans are only peculiar to international students. Um, at this time, I also included Libro Credit Union loan. This was like a loan for high-performing African students, and it was given by, by Libro Credit Union in conjunction with Ivy Business School. The amount was in US, sorry, the amount was in Canadian dollars. And then Progedy Finance Loan, if you have your Progedy Finance Loan from Progedy Financing and the amount is usually in US dollars, you put the US dollars amount and then the equivalent in Canadian dollars. The point of this letter is to show where this, the point of this letter is to show the different sources where this money is coming from and to show the equivalent in Canadian dollars. So the individual sources have their equivalent in Canadian dollars. At the end of the day, you have the total amount in Canadian dollars here. One thing you want to do is to also indicate where you converted this amount. So people like to use the official rate or go on Google, or some people like to use the black market rate. For me, I used the Oanda's exchange rate. I got this tip from a friend who had just finished from Ivy Business School as well. Shout out to Nifestimi. You're amazing. So I used the set date that I was going to send this letter. Remember my letter is February 2nd. I actually started writing this letter on February 2nd. But by the time I sent in my application, the rates had changed. So I used February 3rd. And so the exchange rate for the one Canadian dollar to the Nigerian Naira equivalent at the time, sadly, is double today. And then the US dollar equivalent as well. I also put in my source wanda.com and then and then my guaranteed investment fund had the Canadian equivalent written on the reference letter itself. So I indicated that the amount written on the reference letter is what I had put in on my guaranteed investment fund letter. But you can also find this amount written on my reference letter. So this is the meat of what you want to describe. Let's go now to the final part of this letter. Yes, more disclosures. So remember, I, so remember I said that my guaranteed fund had the Canadian equivalent of my Nigerian Naira of all my investments with the bank at that time? Yes, this was because on the reference letter, it was natural for them to write the equivalent since they were a bank. However, at the time I applied for my study visa, I was lucky to get into the express stream. That is the stream that the IRCC agents need to give you feedback within 20 days, I think, around that time. And so one of the requirements was to get my bank statement sent directly to the IRCC portal with a printout of my bank statements receipts that had like a code, with a printout that had my bank statement um, code on it for the IRCC to log on to my account directly using that code. However, the money market fund was not yet on this platform. So what I did was I already had a conversation, a mail conversation, writing and requesting for them to send my statement directly to IRCC, the agent from my investment fund got back to me and told me they were not yet on that platform. And so they only gave me the reference letter and the statement. So I printed out that mail conversation 
the statement of account and the reference letter and added it to my application. Funny, yes? Yeah, so funny. Every information and every correspondence is important. This way, the IRCC agent knows that the fund is there. It's just that they could not access it directly because my investment bank was not yet on that platform. Also, if you sold any of your property, maybe your car, your sewing machines, your landed property, it would be great for you to also add a note. It would be great for you to also add the note to this effect. So you can say stuff like, note that in coming up with your total savings, you sold your car or any of these properties and you have attached all contract of sale or affidavit to this application. And so finally, I hinted about my buffer. So, so for my studies, I opted in to pay my school fees in four installments, which meant that I could only pay three portions of my school fees in one year and the last portion in the next year. This way, I'm hinting to the agent that although I have all the school fee covered on my proof of funds, I only needed three quarters of my school fee for that active year, while the remaining amount can be a buffer for me. However, you need to make sure that you have all your expenses covered. And then you give your closing remark, hoping that they consider your application for your study visa or your permanent residency to Canada. Yours faithfully, your name. So now we've looked at the three segments of this proof of funds letter. I'd like to show you how it looks like at the end of the day. So I've zoomed back. So this is how it looks like at the end of the day. It's just a one pager. Remember, if you're applying for permanent residency, please don't include loans, only state money that you have. For international students, you're very, very familiar with your international student loans, then you can include your library credit loan, your property financing, parents support, any other thing you need to include here. Now we've seen a snapshot in time of what approval funds has. Let's go back to the rest of the video. Thank you and welcome back. Now we've gone through the illustration. I'm sure you now know that you can apply with a difference. Yes. As much as we love to keep to details and we're meticulous, we want to make sure that people are also able to spot everything they want at once. So now we've come to the end of this video. Please like, share and subscribe. Also share to your friends and loved ones who are looking to come to Canada in the near future. Thank you. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.